synovial joints are hinge, pivot, ball and socket, ellipsoid, saddle, and plane. Let's go through them one by one. The hinge joint. The hinge is a very simple joint. It allows movement only on one axis. Its structure prevents rotation this way or this way. The head of the bone wraps around the cylindrical head of the other, allowing a very stable rotation this way. Going back to the terminology from last week, the hinge joint allows flexion and extension. That's it. That's all it does, but it does it well. Like the hinges on a door allow it only to open or close. The best example of it is the elbow. Here's the rotation on a simplified skeleton. Flexion and extension. Point. The pivot joint also allows rotation at only one axis. However, it rotates along the long axis. A cylindrical bone fits into a ring of bone and ligament, like the radial ulnar joint just below the elbow. The cap on the radius bone fits nicely into this notch on the ulna bone. Ligaments complete the ring, holding the bone in place and allow the radius only to rotate inside of it. The result on the forearm is what we call pronation and supination. During pronation happens at the radius. And by the way, the distal joint of the ulna and radius is also a pivot joint. The combination of the pivot at the top and at the bottom creates that twisting motion for pronation and supination. The ball and socket joint. The ball and socket is the champion of all joints. Hooray for the ball and socket. Its structure is just like how it sounds. A ball inside of a socket. This simple and effective structure allows it to move in all axes flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, rotation, and circumduction. The hip has a deep socket, which gives it stability, but limits some range of motion. The shoulder joint has a shallower socket, which gives it greater range of motion, but takes away some stability. Maybe that's why a dislocated shoulder is so common. Ouch. The ellipsoid joint. The ellipsoid joint is very similar to a ball and socket. However, the ligaments and its oval shape prevent rotation. But it still has the ability to rotate on two axes, which allows flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, and circumduction. Circumduction is just a combination of all the others in a circular motion. The ball, or oval head, also slides inside the socket. When it rotates along the wider plane, you can see how it pops out too much from the socket. So it slides back into center. A great example of an ellipsoid joint is the wrist, also known as the radial carpal joint. The group of carpal bones rotate inside the socket of the radius. The saddle joint. The cave plane of one fits on the convex plane of the other. It's like a 3D yin yang, or a cowboy on a horse. The saddle makes the bottom piece, and the cowboy's legs make the top piece. The legs of the top piece, which wrap around the body of the bottom piece, allow a rotation this way. The body of the top piece can glide inside the legs of the bottom piece. So this unique structure allows the joint to flex, extend, abduct, adduct, circumduct, and very slightly rotate. An example of the saddle joint on the body is the carpometacarpal joint of the thumb. Let's see that baby in action. Finally, the plane joint. 
not really as interesting as the others, but deserves our love anyway. It's basically two flat-ish surfaces, one on top of the other. These surfaces can glide or rotate. They usually come in groups, like the carpals of the hand and the tarsals of the foot. Ligaments hold these bones together, but might allow some rotation and gliding. Another plane joint is the acromioclavicular joint. That's the one between the clavicle and acromion process of the scapula. When we elevate the shoulder, the angle in here will adjust to keep the scapula vertical. The spine. 